Gangster Granny, Chapter 18. Visiting Hours. You can't stay with Granny's, Granny tonight, said Dad. It was four o'clock on Friday afternoon, and Ben had just got home from school. It was strange that Dad was home so early. He usually didn't finish his, his shift at the supermarket until eight. Why not? asked Ben, noticing his dad's face was dark with worry. I'm afraid I've got some bad news, son. What? demanded Ben, his face darkening with worry too. Granny's in hospital. A little while later, once they'd finally found a parking space, Ben and his parents went through the automatic doors of the hospital. Ben wondered if mum and dad were ever going to find Granny in here. The hospital was impossibly tall and wide, and a great monument to illness. There were lifts that you took to other lifts, mile-long corridors, signs everywhere that Ben couldn't comprehend. Coronary care unit, radiology, obst obstetrics, clinical decision unit, MRI scanning room. Confused, looking patients on trolleys or in wheelchairs were being wheeled up and down by porters as doctors and nurses who looked like they hadn't been to bed in for days, hurried past them. When they finally found the wing Granny was in, right up on the 19th floor, Ben didn't recognize her at first. Her hair was flat on her head. She didn't have her glasses on or her teeth in, and she was not wearing her own clothes, but a standard issue NHS nightgown. It was as if all of the things that made her Granny had been taken from her, and she was now just a shell. Ben felt so sad to see her like this, but tried to hide it. He didn't want to upset her. Hello, dears, she said. Her voice was croaky, and her speech a little slurred. Ben had to take a deep breath to stop from bursting into tears. How are you feeling, Mum? asked Ben's dad. Not too clever, she replied. I had a fall. A fall? said Ben. Yes, I don't remember much about it. One moment I was reaching in the larder for a tin of cabbage soup. The next thing I knew I was lying on the liner staring at the ceiling. My cousin Edna called me a number of times from her nursing home. When she couldn't get an answer, she called the ambulance. When did you fall over? Granny, asked Ben. Let me think. I was lying on the kitchen floor for two days, so it must have been Wednesday morning. I couldn't get up to reach the telephone. I'm so sorry, Mum, said Dad quietly. Ben had never seen his father look so upset. It's funny because I meant to call you on Wednesday, you know, just for a chat to see how you are, said Mum lying. She had never called the old lady in her life. And if Granny ever called the house, Mum couldn't get off the phone quick enough. You weren't to know, dear, said Granny. They did all kinds of tests this morning to see what's wrong with me. X-rays and scans and the like. I'll get the results tomorrow. Hopefully, I won't be in here too long. I hope so too, said Ben. There was an uncomfortable silence. No one quite knew what to say or do. Mum hesitantly nudged Dad and mimed looking at her watch. Ben knew hospitals made her uncomfortable. When he'd had his appendix out two years before, she had only visited him a couple of times, and even then it made her sweat and fidget. Well, we'd better be off, said Dad. Yes, yes, you go, said Granny with lightness in her voice. But, but sadness in her eyes. Don't you worry about me. I'll be fine. Can't we stay a bit longer? Piped up Ben. Mum shot him an anguished look, which Dad clocked. No, come along, Ben. The granny will need to go to sleep in a few hours, said Dad, as he stood up and readied himself to leave. I'm quite busy, Mum, but I'll try to pop in over the weekend. He patted his mum, mother on the head, like one might a dog. It was an awkward gesture. Dad wasn't a hugger. He turned to go. Mum smiled weakly and then pulled a reluctant Ben 
across the ward by his wrist. Up in his bedroom later that evening, Ben determinedly sorted all the information he'd gathered from school that week. We'll show them, Granny, he thought fiercely. I'm going to do it for you. Now Granny was ill, he was more determined to do it than ever. He had until tea time to plan the greatest jewel theft in history. And next time we'll be back with chapter 19, a small explosive device.